So one of the big questions that we get here at Ten Bound in looking at the Ten Bound market map for sales development is with the proliferation of outsourced SDR companies, how do you go about winnowing it down and, and deciding which are the ones that are right for you? And the way that most people do it is they ask their friends or they go on online chat forums. And so we wanted to provide this framework as a way to think about, okay, starting from the beginning, how do I think about you know, winnowing down the companies, doing demos and eventually deciding on which company right, might be right for me and what I'm trying to achieve. So outsource SDR companies can be used for a lot of things. Um, they can obviously be used for appointment setting for your sales team. Um, they can be used for building pipeline in a vertical or a specific industry where you don't have an SDR team. Or if you're a small company and you just need uh, an invoice instead of actually hiring someone, you can hire one of the uh, outsource SDR companies. So there's a lot of use cases for them. And um, one thing to think about is over on the left, um, what is your uh, vertical? What is your industry? And what is your target market size? And are you going after small businesses, mid-market businesses, or enterprise? Uh, because many of the companies that are on the market map, first of all, they're, they're specialized. They're very specialized. So in other words, there could be one that only specializes in you know, mid-market insurance companies in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, there could be some that only focus on you know, financial services or uh, you know, technology companies and things like that. So that's one of the first questions that you wanna ask when you're talking to people. Um, or looking at companies is what, what is your specialty? Um, because as you could think about it, verticals and industries and market sizes and things like that, they all have a special vocabulary. They've got a, a handful of influencers. They've got specialized blogs. They've got um, all these things that people focus on for 10, 20, 30 years in their career. And if you're coming in as a generalist and you can't speak that language, then you're, you're gonna struggle. Um, and so there's a lot of the companies on the market map have sprung up as very specialized uh, you know, uh, industry experts. And so if you're in that industry and you're trying to break into it, uh, those are the ones that you probably wanna look at pretty closely. And then the next question to ask is how do they handle their, um, their billing? And, and so you know, this could be, uh, either performance-based appointment setting, full stack sales development, or fully automated sales development. So it really just depends on your budget and what you're looking to achieve uh, with the time and, and resources that you have. And, uh, and so the way that they're kind of broken out is uh, you've got performance-based appointment setting where it's basically all the risk here goes on the, the vendor. Um, they're saying that they can take the information that you give them and you'll only have to pay for meetings that they set or results that they set, uh, you know, if, if it meets your qualification. And so this used to be a really popular way of doing things. Um, you don't really hear about it much anymore because um, it puts all the risk on the vendor and, and they, um, it, it's very hard for them to produce results. And so they could be working on your project for three or four months and come back and say, we don't have any results. And it's not necessarily that they were a bad company. It's just that you, you know, your market that you're calling on is very limited or, or you didn't have any messaging or they, they, uh, or they could be a, a poor performance company. And in that case, you know, they're, they're um, they showed that they couldn't actually do it for you. Um, so if you're, talking to a company that's performance based you just want to make sure that you understand um, you know what is the qualification for the appointment and when when does it trigger a payment um, and and you know who has to decide on what's a good appointment versus bad uh, so you know the benefit is that you're not taking on as much risk as a customer but the risk there for you is that you could you could be working with the company for several months and nothing comes of it so 
The more popular version that, that's been developed is the full stack sales development is, and this is when they, they bill you um, each month, you know, regardless of performance um, under sort of a proof of concept model. And, and so this sort of uh, puts a little bit more skin in the game on both sides where you have to provide training and a playbook and uh, you know the messaging and be really involved at the upfront to make sure that the company has everything that they need to be able to perform. And if you um, if, if you're uh, you know effective in that training and they're a good company, uh, this could be a great fit because you know they're going to work on your case uh, month after month because they, they don't want to lose the um, subscription you know, revenue that they're getting, um, and you could potentially expand. Um, what uh, some of these companies do it also is almost act as like a recruiter, where um, if you if you like the person that's um, uh, prospecting on your behalf, uh, or you, you're interested in, in hiring, uh, they can actually go ahead and facilitate the hiring process. And so you can use them to build out your internal team and um, use it almost as a um, uh, uh, tryout. And so that has some uh, great effects too. One thing that's uh, co constant with a lot of these companies is that they're sort of a process black box. Their, their process is your, uh, the value. Um, and so they don't necessarily wanna share that. <laughs> um, and uh, which is a good thing because if you're hiring one of these companies, then it, means that you don't necessarily want to deal with the process and building a process at your company for sales development. But on the flip side is once you stop paying the invoice, then the process walks away and you've got to go back and build it from scratch. So some interesting things to consider there. Fully automated sales development. Now this is this is a newer thing. Um, it's it's uh, you know in sort of the newer stages so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out from a results perspective but the promise here is that you you give these companies your messaging your playbook you work with them to get it all set up and they use um you know automated outreach tools and ro robots and ai and whatever the latest buzzword is um, to go out and and set appointments for you um, and they virtually will eliminate the human element of it. So, um, you know, in this case, uh, it's, uh, it's a marketing function, uh, essentially, but with a, a little bit more personalization and customization, you know, based on what the um, AI and the, the um, automation can do. And, um, you know, I've seen results, especially when it's like you, you just need to contact everybody in a market to drive them to a event or, um, you know, uh, have them uh, link to you on LinkedIn so that you can get them on your email list and, you know, start to build out an audience and things like that. So it's, it's good for things that are just, they can be automated at this point in the, in the cycle and we don't necessarily need to put a human on it. And you, you can save a lot of money from not having somebody just literally like cutting and pasting and pressing a button all day. Um, so, you know, what are these the best for? So performance-based, it's like, if you, if you just don't know what's out there in the market and, and you, you're a very disruptive product and, you know, nobody's heard of you and it's just, you just need to go out and start talking to people and it, it it's, wouldn't necessarily even drive very much pipeline. It's almost more of an educational thing and hopefully they can get a meeting and if they do, you, you can pay for it um, and hopefully gather some data um, from it. But, you know, I, it's, uh, the, it's, it's low risk on your end, but it's uh, really for, you know, um, cold, cold outreach because, um, if you're going with the full stack sales development, then it could be both. And it, they could also do inbound uh, qualification and research for you and, and um, share, you know, more of the data and, and really work with you as a, as a partner um, and, uh, and, you know, work together over a longer term period. 
uh, to 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 build that out. Um, and then with the fully automated, it's it's you know again if you if you've got uh, point campaigns, uh, they don't call, um, so you know there's not going to be any any robots doing cold calls yet. Um, no, uh, you know the just the robot thing that calls you from a B2C perspective, I haven't seen that work yet in B2B. Um, and so, you know, if you just got some big campaigns, it's almost like an extension of, of a marketing campaign. And, and, um, and so that could be an option as well. So qualification level, you know, um, it, if you think about um, authority and need, uh, you know, the, the performance base can, usually they can find someone that's the right person and they might have a need if they caught them at the right time. Otherwise they would probably wouldn't take a meeting with you. Um, the full stack can do that, but they could, might be able to get timing if you share your inbound leads with them. Um, but it's gonna be more careful. It's gonna be more um, personalized and, and just a higher quality of outreach. Uh, because they're really a partner with you. And then um, with uh, the fully automated, the, you know, the advantage there is just the massive scale. Um, that's what uh, the robots can do for us is apply massive scale to an outreach campaign and, and, uh, and you know, use a little bit of light qualification to get them in your, your pipeline. So looking at that, some considerations, we have a more uh, deep dive on the blog um, if you just do a quick search for the um, industry decision framework. And I hope that's helpful.